Hello, I'm Single-Minded Ryan. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this wind shader effect, and it's very useful for the trees in a 2D top-down game. I'm going to show you how to randomize the rate of the sway for each individual tree. First, let's create a new visual shader for the Sprite 2D node of the tree. Then open the shader editor. Let me hide the things that we don't need to make more room. I want to briefly mention that the product I'm using here is from my latest 2D top-down Godot course. For the full course, please check out the link in the description below. Make sure we are in the vertex mode and add a UV node. We are going to use the green channel of the UV as the mast of the swaying movement. Let's remap the value of the green channel. This is going to reverse the mask upside down. Also leave the bottom area black so the stump of the tree is not going to be affected. Next, let's multiply the mask by a float value. This value is going to decide the direction and the range of the swaying movement. To actually change the look of the sprite, we need to update its vertex. So let's add a vertex node. We only want to change the horizontal value of the vertices. So let's decompose the vertex node into a vector 2. Then let's multiply the x value by the value of the swaying movement. Now let's compose the values back into a vector 2. Alright. Now we can connect the final value to the vertex property of the shader. Now we can change the float value to check out the result. Next, let's find out a way to update this value to create a loop animation. We can do it using the time node. Let's multiply the time by a float value because the value of time passes really slowly and we need it to change faster. To randomize the speed, let's create a float parameter. We are going to set this parameter in the script with a random number. So let's name it random strength. You need to set qualifier to instance. We need this value to bounce back and forth. So let's connect it to a sign node. So the float is always between negative one and one. Then we plug in this value and we are done. And this is the final graph for your reference. Next, let's update the parameter in the script. You can ignore the existing code in this script since it has nothing to do with this shader. And we just need to add one line in the ready function. This line is going to update the random strength parameter with a random float number at the beginning of the game. All right, we are finished. Let's test the game. I hope you enjoyed this video. And please check out my Udemy course from the link in the description if you're interested in making your own game.